Okay, in this video, I just want to quickly talk about the importance of a drip edge. So um, I was just browsing through Street for the other day, actually looking at something on this building, and then um, very quickly something caught my eye over here. I was like, "Whoa, there's a lot of there's a lot of staining happening on this building." And this building is quite new, actually. It's um, I'm going to say not more than a few years old, and you know, it was it's quite well done. Like it's it's got some nice finishes on it, full bed brick veneer, and then unfortunately. Uh, wasn't um, constructed properly and maybe maybe not detailed properly as well probably and um, now it's gonna be plagued with staining like this for um, for the life of the building so let's just take a look at um, what happened and uh, what you could do differently to help um, avoid this situation and before we get to how to avoid it, um, just some more examples here. So here's another example where um, there's a there's a horizontal surface here that's going to collect a lot of dirt and grime, and then it's going to rain, and that stuff's going to get washed down the face of there uh, and stain. Um, in this case, that that porous granite. Another example here, um, again, dirt washing down the face of this building and coming down onto the uh, more porous um, block veneer in that case and um, staining the block veneer this is an interesting one here uh, this building back here is probably from the 1940s is my guess and i don't see any staining on the brick or very little anyways it's a little bit off the edge but um, it weathered pretty well over time and decades later, this addition was built, and they obviously tried to match some of the detailing that was on this building. Um, and so they did a very similar sill, but they forgot one very important thing. So they did the extension, which is good. That extends out a little bit, but they forgot something else, and now this didn't perform very well. So back in the old days, uh, the old timers, they had it, they had it figured out. Um, and then decades later, you think we would have um, learned and maybe even improved um, for what they did but it looks like we actually went the opposite direction based on that and that so here's another old building with a very similar detail and again i don't see much staining on the brick here it's a little bit on the edge on the corners there which is kind of to be expected um, but there's something underneath here so they've done the uh, they've extended the sill out which is very very important so if we go back to this one right here that sill does not extend out so that's mistake number one um, they, they put the face of the concrete flush with the face of the brick so that's not good uh, i noticed on the cap it looks like they did not but it doesn't look like it's much of an overhang and even if there was they've obviously forgotten the second most important thing so one you want to extend it out and um Two, we can't see it in this picture, but it is there. I can see it kind of on the edge right there. It's a bit of a groove is what you need right there. So that's called a drip edge. And get a better picture of that. Here's another really old building with a very similar detail. And um, they've extended it out and they've put this groove in there. And that groove is what's gonna force the water to drip down. Because if you don't do the groove, uh, water will come down the face of here and via surface tension, it will go back along here and then go down the face of the of the um, the wall surface if you put that groove in there water comes down it starts to go back and as soon as it hits that groove it'll drip and so some more examples here where they did the overhang um, but then forgot the the drip edge so again water's coming down here and via surface tension it's probably coming back like this and doing that unfortunately same with this building here um I, I got close to this and i i could see there's no drip edge on there so they did the overhang forgot the drip edge uh, i've seen this all the time which is why i'm doing this video here's another building that's that's uh, off that's plagued by the same issue as well so they did the stone coping which is very popular but they just didn't detail that right and now it's plagued with all these issues okay so let's look at the right way to do it so the first place I'm going to go is the brick industry and they have a technical bulletin 36A which talks about coping. So that's a lot of what we're seeing there is a concrete coping. And they don't have the exact same um, you know, detail, but it's, it's similar. But the important things we got to get out of this is, it's not a very good drawing, but it gets the point across. So you want to have um, that drip edge in here. 
Okay, so they don't actually, they don't call up the drip edge, but they show it. There's a drip edge there. It is there. And it needs to be 25 millimeters minimum from the face of the brick. Okay, so you need to do the overhang and you need to do the drip edge. The other thing I wouldn't recommend here, um, which I don't know if they, uh, they obviously don't show it here, but um, don't, don't slope the, the cap, the cap this way. I like, don't do that. Don't ever slope the cap to the front of the building. Like just slope it back onto the roof. Do a one-way slope back onto the roof. The other thing that's talked about in this bulletin too is um, putting a metal flashing between the, the concrete coping and the brick. So it's hard to see here, but it is there. And they do note it. There, there should be a flashing separating the two. And that's just because they're, you know, moisture can um, migrate through the concrete cap. You got to remember too that the concrete cap isn't continuous. So there's going to be like a, a, a cock joint between each panel basically and water could get through there and you don't want water accumulating into your brick or you're going to get that efflorescence like we like we see in um, some of these buildings right here so you, you know these joints right here would be cock joints between there so they're not going to be perfect over time uh, so they there'll be a weak point so um, adding that flashing in there is important as well so that's the recommendation from the um, masonry industry and that's what should have been done in all those examples. Something else that's kind of interesting as well is uh, RDH Labs did a, I just searched for RDH effectiveness of drip edges, which it didn't come from RDH Labs, but it's in Construction Canada here. Um, they did actually a study on um, a whole bunch of the effectiveness of different drip edge um, profiles. So they, they studied a uh, 45 degree kick, um, at two distances. So with this kick being out, I think it was 20 millimeters and 45 millimeters. They studied uh, the same one, but a hemmed seam. And then they did a straight edge and another hemmed straight edge. And then they did a, a stone seal with um, the drip edge on it. And so if we go to the data for this, um, and this is kind of how they did it. You can, you can go there, just Google it if you're looking for that. But they just had a bunch of troughs basically. And then they did the different, the different sills and ran water over it and then they just they just collected water in each trough and, and you know basically uh, seen how much water how far the water went before it was caught in the trough or whatever so the outcome of that was um, they tested a 12 gauge and a 20 gauge flashing and the green is um, the uh, the total water shed that was greater than 90%. So if it shed more than 90% of the water, then it's in a green box, which means if it shed more than 90% of the water, that's a good thing. And so what performed the best here was the 90 degree no hem. So the no hem is, um, the, actually we're looking at these two right now. So that's, that's the 90 degree bend with no hem is that one right there. That's the hemmed one. And so the 90 degree uh, no hem performed, wow, much better than the hemmed one. Like much, much better. That's actually crazy how much better that performed. And um, of course it varies, um, you know, that, that 45 millimeter out from the face is gonna perform better than the 20 millimeter obviously, but you know, the 20 millimeter out did quite well as well. What's kind of odd about this is that the 20 millimeter hemmed did much better than the 45 millimeter hemmed. So I don't know what's up with that, but nonetheless, that's, that's what happened. Um, so that is that, and then they did a 20 gauge as well. And um, it looks like the 20 gauge, actually the 20 gauge 45 millimeter out, pretty much at 100% success rate. Then they get into the um, the 45 kicks. So they did a 45 hemmed and no hem. So just go back to the, so there's the hemmed 45 and there's the, just the non hemmed 45 right there. And if we look at that data, it looks like the 20 gauge no hem performed the best. 
And lastly, um, they just got some photos of this, the stone seal one. What they what they say with respect to this one right here was that there was no water collected in any of the troughs during the test of the stone seal with a slope of 20 millimeters, with a sort of eight degree slope and a 20 millimeter overhang. So the overhang distance was 20 millimeters. They don't mention that there was a drip edge there, but um, there obviously was because they drew it in. And no water was collected, meaning uh, it performed very, very well. And they attribute this to you know, the water was better distributed horizontally compared to the metal drip edges. So I guess it's whatever. It performed the best in the study anyways. So so there you go. Some interesting information, um, but don't, don't make this mistake. It's very unfortunate that uh, this is happening when it's just, it's a really, really simple, 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 simple little fix. That's all. Thanks.